Hey, welcome, or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know, and you'll know from the uh, thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description, uh, this is a tutorial using um, a brand that I've not used on my channel before. However, I have tried their products off camera, which I don't think they knew when I contacted them to try and get hold of these beautiful pastel pigments. Now, these do not release until the 8th of July, so I have got them early. Uh, I contacted the brand because I love the look of them and although I didn't tell Karen at the time, sorry Karen, I have actually used some of their other eyeshadow pigments and absolutely loved them. So I'm in a pastel mood and I wanted to try them. Karen was uh, helpful enough that she let me buy these pigments from her early so that I could do this tutorial for you and without me even asking I've got a cheeky little discount code so I'm going to try and display these pigments now that's not going to work let's do them let's do them sideways on because otherwise you know I'm gonna end up dropping them which let's face it could still happen <coughs> so these are the little pots of pastel pigment that's a lot of peas and a white pigment base, I should make sure that's the right way up for the thumbnail, from a UK indie brand called Crow and Pebble. So if you want to find out exactly how to use loose eyeshadow pigments, and find out exactly how well these applied to get this beautiful spring summery look then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and get comfy Enjoy! Hey! Welcome back from the intro. Right, this film is a little bit different because I've actually managed to get my hand on some products which haven't yet been released. I paid for them. They are not PR. Okay? Full disclosure, I paid for these items. Um, I'd used some Crow and Pebble stuff before. Um, I'd ordered some of their sample sized eyeshadows which come in these little like zip locky bag things. This is if you order a sample size, this is what you get. All of their products are all of their powder products are loose rather than pressed. Um, and I'd I'd seen that they'd put some pictures up of some pastel shades they're going to release. If I, if I can find it, I'll stick a picture up there. And those pastel shades are part of a whole collection called the Segafault Collection. Now, to give you a bit of background, Crow, and I've got it written down here, so if you see me looking this way, that's why. Um, they are a handmade cosmetics company based in the UK where they do everything from you know formulating the items right the way through to creating the end product okay they're 100% vegan they're cruelty free 
and they use ethical ingredients. Okay. Now, the majority of their line has some kind of storytelling theme to it, be it uh, mythical or historical or literature based and they produce bullet lipsticks, eyeshadow bases and loose powder products including blushes, highlighters, contour powders and eyeshadows. Um, all of them are formulated to be pigmented, blendable and offer a wide variety of shades from neutrals and naturals to bulbs and brights so if you're not someone who wants a lot of colour they've got you covered, they've got neutral stuff too. Um, now as I was saying I actually I got a, a little sample size pot of their eyeshadow base which I have actually used today. You can see it's it's um it's a white eyeshadow base which I thought would be better than using my usual MAC um, Soft Ochre Pro Longwear because Pro Longwear? Soft Ochre Paint Pot. It's hot folks, I've got the fan on, I'm, I'm melting here. Um, because the soft ochre gives almost like a yellowy tint and I wanted these pastel colours to be true to shade and be as punchy as possible in terms of finished result. So I picked up a sample pot of their eyeshadow um, base. It's it's a firm it's firmer than the um, the paint pot but it's not so firm that you have to to fight with it to get it on. I actually just used um, this Chic Pro Spot Concealer brush from Royal & Langnickel to apply it because obviously, hello, nails. Um, but you could, uh, you know, it, it will be easy enough just to pop your finger in if you've not got nails like mine and just pat it across the eye. Um, it's not a sticky base, it's a nice dry base and even though I've not set it you can see it hasn't actually creased which is pretty damn amazing for me. Now, these five pastel shades that I've got are part of the collection from the Sega Fault, which was a collaboration between Karen from Crow and Pebble and a lady called Sharon who is swatch.me.now on Instagram. Um, I will I can remember I'll try and link both their Instagrams in the description box below um, and it's all named after concepts in computer science um, it's an all matte collection it's got neutral mattes colorful pastels and some deeper fun shades as well now these launch on July the 8th so like I said I actually approached Karen and said look I'm absolutely loving those pastels um, I'd love to be able to get a review up prior to them going on sale so that people can see the quality of them and if they're worried about using loose eyeshadows I can show them in the review just how easy it is to actually use them. Um, you know, can I, can I buy them off of you early? And she's like, uh, okay, let me, have a look at, uh, let me have a look at your YouTube channel because she'd not collabed with YouTubers before, all the bloggers she'd used before were like Instagram bloggers or etc. Um, and she had a look at my channel and happily came back and said, yep, absolutely, would love to. So that's really, really kind of her and I can't thank her enough for that because obviously I'm still quite small uh, compared to some of the people out there. But as you all know, I've been trying this year to use as many indie based companies as possible and to use smaller brands because I, I feel that smaller brands have a better quality control than larger ones because things tend to be made in smaller batches and you've got a person behind it it's not a corporation just looking at a tally of numbers at the end of the month you've got a person who is putting their heart and soul into creating items that they think you will enjoy so you all know I've been, you know, with my my September Rose, with my Blush Tribe, with my um, Certify, with my Oh My Glitter OMG. You know, I use a lot of indie brands, and this is another UK indie brand that, as you can see in here, I've got 
because I didn't actually, I don't think even Karen knows this. I actually ordered a couple of their mystery box sample things and I've been playing with these off camera for quite a while. So I knew the quality of their eyeshadows before I approached her and asked for these samples of these pastel ones. Now, there's different sizes that you can buy. Um, the majority of people go for this sort of size, which is the pot. Now what I've got, these are half filled for me because they're sample sizes. So obviously I paid a bit less than um, retail for them. But because they're half filled, you can either do, this has got um, 2.5 ml of loose product, which equates to approximately one gram of product in here. Um, da -da -da. The shadows will be sold as loose powder samples, which come in 0.06 ml of product in a small grip seal bag. So that's this sort of size. Yes, that's the third colour I've pulled out to show you. I've got a lot of different colours in here. So this is the um, the sample size in a grip seal bag. And then they'll also be sold in full size in these pots, which will contain 5ml of product. So that equates to roughly 2 gram of product. Okay? Now, she's also really kindly... I didn't ask for this, but she has given me a non-affiliated discount code. So... Like all my other discount codes, it's BOMBER in all caps. It is, uh, it becomes applicable on Monday the 1st of July. It will apply to any products in their store and will give you, wait for it, 15% off of your order. And I didn't even ask for a discount code. I am so, so happy. Um, they do free shipping on UK orders over £18, European orders over £25, and international orders over £40. So for those of you in America who are like, oh, mm, prices for shipping, just spend 40 quid and you get it for free, okay? Right, that's enough wittering. I want to start putting these on my face. Because I'm excited. So the five colours that I've got here are Paxos, which is the lilac, Fuzza, which is like a, a peachy shade, Curse of Dimensionality, which is the baby blue, Cash Eviction, which is the lemon, and Non-Determinism which is the, the minty green. So, working with loose product, it is a bit different to a pressed product in that you will get fallout. If you use the product dry, which I'm going to do today, you will get fallout. That's inevitable. However, if you're aware of this, you just don't do your base first and just dust it all off when you're done and then put your base on okay now I, I had a play with these yesterday seeing what the um, what the performance was like when they used dry both on my bare skin on their base and on the MAC soft ochre paint pot base um, and I used them dry I used them with a wet brush and I use them mixed with a, uh, a pigment mixer that I've got from Makeup Revolution. Okay. Using them dry gives you a very soft pastel -y look. Using them wet gives you a more intense look and you do get less fallout with those. There's negligible difference between mixing them to a paste with a mixing medium or applying them with a wet brush so you can use either because it gives you pretty much the same result on your eyes now for the look that I want to do today I want a really soft kind of spring summery gentle pastel look so I'm going to be using them dry 
I will at the end show you the difference on the back of my hand between a dry swatch and a wet brush swatch just so you can see the difference okay right that's an awful lot of wittering before I've even got started now you'll know if you're a regular viewer of mine I'm a teaching channel so I talk you through every stage so if you are a complete beginner you can follow every single step without getting lost without getting left behind if you are more expert or you can blend quicker than me because with my chronic pain I do frequently have to stop and chatter at you for a bit to disguise the fact I'm getting shooting pains up my arm and can't blend to save my life at that point in time uh, there is a speed widget I really will not be offended if you use it because to be quite honest I'm not going to know if you've used it okay right let's get you zoomed in Uh, as you can see, as I was saying with this base, it hasn't creased at all, which is really surprising because I've got deep set eyes, which a lot of people mistake for hooded eyes. So I'm just going to run through the difference for you. I do this in all of my teaching films. Now, with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, my eyes open, you can see all of my mobile lid. So I don't have hooded lids, okay? If your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line, your mobile lid, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now what I've got is, it was originally called deep set eyes, they're currently calling it like double lidded eyes and I'll show you what I mean because I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get in that I get transference of shimmer onto the upper eye. When I'm cutting my crease I can't just cut across the the eyeball, I have to cut up onto the upper lid as well and even when I use glitter glues, glitter always ends up with a bare patch somewhere. All right, now, if I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see as much lid again that tucks back in that you can't see. And if I cover the static lid and close my eye, again you can see there's there's a lid there that, that gets tucked back in as well. So that is the difference between a hooded lid and a deep set eye. But all of my tutorials are hooded lid friendly because of my deep set eyes. If you don't have any mobile lid showing, get a brush, something like this, and just sketch a line on your static lid where you want to create your new crease line. So you're creating a, a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So just use slightly smaller brushes than I do. Right, the brush I'm going to go in with is this Boozy Shop Tapered Blending Brush. It is clean, it's just stained from colours that I've used before. So I'm going to go into Paxos, which is the lilac to start with. Now, when you are using a loose powder, you dip your brush in and tap off. And it's literally, it, it's, it's the same, you know when you use, when you, when you tap your brush into an eyeshadow palette and you get kick up in the pan, and then next time you go into the pan, you pick up that kick up. Well, effectively, this is just a pot full of pickup, all right? So it's much easier to get the colour onto your lid. You just have to, sometimes you have to build it up more because obviously you're, you're, you're tapping off quite a lot of the excess and also you will get fallout. But just do your eyes first, okay? So I'm going to start off with this lilac and I'm going to pat it because obviously I've not set this base. So I'm just going to pat the colour onto the base and build that colour up just by gently patting and moving the brush around. And every so often I'm dipping back in, picking up a bit more pigment and building that pigment up. Seriously, how easy is that? It's, it's actually 
once you get the hang of using loose pigments, it's actually easier than using a pressed pigment because it's it's easy to get the pigment to transfer to the brush and then from the brush onto your eyelid or wherever you are placing it. Uh, but a lot of people that have never used them before are a bit scared of it because they they put too much powder on the brush and then get a heck of fallout. I mean you can see I've getting fallout here. But as I said, it really doesn't bother me because I'm doing my base afterwards anyway. But given that these are pastel shades, look at how that colour has built up already. I mean pastels are very difficult to do and get any depth of colour to them. Um, so I'm actually really, really liking this so far. The only thing to remember is to put the pot, put the lid back on the pot as soon as you're done because if you're a klutz like me, you'll end up spilling it everywhere and then getting annoyed with yourself that you've wasted a product. Right, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm just going to rub the brush onto in between colours just so I don't transfer any of the pigment into the other pots. But I'm still going to use the same brush and I'm going to go into fuzzer. I need to have a wiggle. Hang on a minute. Sorry, I'm... Okay. Right, so I'm going to go into fuzzer, which is the peach pigment. And it looks like this. So again, just tap the tip of your bristles in probably easier to see with this one you can see that's how much pigment I'm picking up at a time and I'm just tapping off so I'm literally only putting the tip of the bristles into the pigment I'm just going to apply this one next to the lilac slightly overlapping the edge of the lilac there a little bit of blending just to blend the two colours together Using loose pigments you will find that blending them together is so much easier because they are a loose mm. pigment. So it's almost like they want to blend. Um, which is absolutely awesome. And as I said, once you've used loose pigments a few times and you're used to them, it really won't phase you at all. Um, and if you've had like if you've bought some of the neon pigments that Blush Tribe and Oh My Glitter have got out and you've been struggling with using those, well, just use them the same way that I'm showing you here. Tap off, only put the tip of the bristles in. I'm holding the brush right at the end, so I'm putting as little pressure on my eyes as possible. Very, very gentle feather light circular movements to blend the two shades together and don't forget if you blend too much of the colour away you just tap back into the pot and add the colour back in again I really like their base it's the first base I've had that doesn't actually crease on me without being set because even the, the Max Soft Flocker paint pot creases on me after a little while. So I'm definitely going to be getting, once I've, uh, once I've finished my Soft Ochre paint pot, I'm not going back to Mac, I'm going to go to Crow and Pebble and get uh, a bit more of their paint base. Because I really like it. I think I'm also going to have to get some of their highlighters to try. Because you know me and highlighters. Right, put the lid back on before I spill it everywhere because I am a klutz. And the next colour I'm going into is the baby blue, which is called Curse of Dimensionality. Love that. And that's like this. Beautiful, beautiful blue. 
and again, putting just the tip of the bristles in. And tapping off. Now I'm going to put this on the inner part of my eye. And you can see that, you know, you do get fallout with loose powders. You always will. It's just the nature of the game. But because the powders are loose and can be picked up onto your brush so easily and blended together so easily, you can get such vibrant looks without a lot of effort at all because very often when you press a shadow you um, you have to put you know ingredients in there that will actually hold like, like sort of bonding ingredients in there to hold the shadow together I've got very deep creasing on this eye where it was pulled around when I was a kid so I actually have to just stretch that out slightly, but don't do that to your lid unless you have to. Otherwise you will end up with deep uh, creases like I've got. Yeah, the, um, the benefit of, of loose shadows is that because they've not got the additional ingredients in there to keep them pressed, you don't have any problems with getting them up onto the brush because you can get issues with when you press shades because you've had to add ingredients to it to make it cling together um, you'll have heard me say wow this shade's been pressed really firmly I'm finding it difficult to get it up onto the brush you're never going to say that with a loose pigment like you can see when I did the blue on this eye I've covered up a little bit too much of the peach so, I'm just going to go back in and build that peach back up in the middle. And it really is that simple, folks. I just, I really love working with loose pigments. But larger companies don't tend to do loose pigments because it's much easier for them on a production line to do something they can press into a pan um, which I get, you know, if, if they're producing millions of them I get that you're going to want something that's, that's easy right, I'm going to go with, with the green which is non-determinationism No, non-determinism, not notion at all. I'm just making up my own words here. Right, I'm going to pop this brush down because obviously I'm going to go on to the lid now. And I'm going to grab one of these Morphe uh, M321 brushes. You're best off using a brush that isn't majorly fluffy because obviously that will end up fluffing your, your pigment all over the place. You need a certain amount of fluff for blending, obviously, but you also need something that's actually going to lay the pigment down. So, pick that up there. I'm just going to, because obviously I'm blind in this side, I can't close this one completely, so I'm going to look down into a smaller mirror here so I can see where I'm applying this, but I'm now going to apply this to my lid. Now, I'm not going to cut my crease because I want to see whether these have got the opacity in them to cover any of the shadows that may have gone onto my mobile lid. Let's test, shall we? Because when I was playing with these yesterday, I was just playing with the textures on the back of my hand. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell that's got the opacity to cover. 
This is awesome. I'm going to have to get me some more of these. But I can see me using these an awful lot this summer. Maybe not all five of them in one eye look every single time I do it. Um, but I can certainly see me using these in the summer. I mean, they'd be great if you're heading to the beach or somewhere where you're you're wanting a a quick, simple makeup look that isn't obviously made up makeup kind of thing. Just popping one of these onto a, a fluffy brush and sweeping it across the lid and just sort of blending and fading it up towards the brow would give a really really pretty do that with you know put your SPF on your skin use like a glowy tinted moisturizer um, you know use one of these just blend it out over the eye a bit of mascara a bit of lip gloss and off you go and that would look so pretty this is real I am loving this green oh I'm going to be using this a lot I'm going through a green, blue and purple phase. People that have watched me a lot will probably realise this. I'm just putting the lid back on the green before I spill it everywhere because, you know. And now into the final one that I've got, which is Cash Eviction. Which is this gorgeous lemon. I and mean, it's a it's a real buttercup lemon. Really pretty. So again, still using this Morphe M321 brush. Picking the pigment up. Now that's a good sign. This yellow has gone over that blue without going green. That is a very, very good pigment. Because normally when you mix, when you put, um, especially when you're using loose pigments, if you put a, a yellow straight over a blue, Normally, because they they blend so beautifully, that's one of the one of the benefits of a loose powder is its blendability. Normally, it will immediately go green, but this hasn't. This has stayed yellow. See, that's that's a really good sign. I will admit, I was testing the pigment by doing that because loose pigments, as I said, because they are so blendable, normally you put them on a blue like this and it would instantly get like a green undertone to it. And this has not done that at all, as you can see. Not one little bit. Ooh, this is pretty. And you know me, regardless of the fact that I've got a discount code with them, and regardless of the fact that they let me buy these early, you always get an honest review from me. Mainly because I'm a crap liar and you'd be able to tell from my face if I wasn't enjoying something. I really like this look. Right. I am going to uh, deal with this fallout and I'm going to go off camera and do my base etc and I will be back to finish off the under eye of this look and uh, give you my final thoughts. See you right now. Hey! Right, as you can see, I'm back. I decided that blue would be a good brow look to go with this. So, that's what I did. Now, uh, remember this flat topped brush that I showed you earlier? I'm going to use this again. And I think I'm going to go into Fuzza which is the peach that I used in the middle of the top lid 
and this is where we do have to be careful because obviously now we've done our base we don't really want fallout so really tap off well and if necessary go over it two or three times to build the colour up so I'm dipping the very tip of the bristles in and tapping off and then building this colour up under the lower lash line very gently the benefit of um, using loose pigments here is that regular viewers will know that I do this and then I normally go in with a thicker brush and a different colour to buff it out but because these looser pigments are very very blendable I usually just go in with one colour when I'm using loose pigments to be quite honest this is the side that I always flinch because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision this side and you would not believe the number of times I have to edit out me poking myself in the eye and saying a very rude word. Hint, it's often. But thankfully I think I've managed to get my editing skills to the point now that you don't realise I've done it. Unless you come back and my eye is watering for no apparent reason, then you know I've just poked myself in it. So I'm just building this colour up under the lower lash line, like so. I really like that. And I love that I'm, that I'm tying the middle colour from the upper lid onto the lower lash line. Right, I'm going to grab um, which highlight to use today. I think I'll use this one. This is the new Revolution um, Revolution Pro Sculpt and Glow contour and highlight palettes that they're using. This particular one is in shade Sands of Time, which is the lightest one. Right now, this is a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago, but it's really great for getting right up under the tail of your brow, popping a bit of highlight in there. And then doing your inner corner. Now I always like to bring mine down underneath my tear duct and just blend it in with whatever colour I've used under my eye because I just find that with my particular eye shape that works best right I'm going to pause you one last time while I stick highlight on the rest of my face uh, put some mascara on, choose a lippy and do something with my hair and I'll be back with my final thoughts so uh, don't go anywhere and I'm back uh, if you're wondering what this lippy is it's, it's a new range from L'Oreal uh, it's called Colour Riche Shine this is the Nectarine Plump I love that word Plump and it's um, it's kind of mentally tingly it's meant to I don't know, increase collagen to the lips or something, make them look more plump. But I really like it because it's a. This is what I thought Jeffrey's wet peach was going to look like. But I wanted a nice, soft, glowy look to go with the beautiful, soft pastel finish. Right. So, what are my thoughts on the stuff that I've got from Cry and Pebble? Um, the eyeshadow base I am definitely buying more of when I run out because they have blended really nicely on top. I'm going to use this with um, some other palettes that I've got and see how well it works with them and providing it works as well with them as it does with the Chrome Pebble uh, pigments I am probably going to end up getting some more of that once I run out. The pastel pigments I absolutely love. They went on 
really nicely. They built up quickly because pastels, I was expecting to have to spend a lot more time building the shades up than I actually did. Um, I was fully expecting to have to dunk back in seven or eight times to get this depth of, of colour where in actuality it was like two or three so I was super super happy with that um, the yellow is opaque enough to go over the blue without going green which is amazing I, I am really very very happy with these pigments um, and I'm definitely going to have a look through and see what else they've got so don't forget from Monday the 1st of July 2019, she said, trying to remember what the bloody year was. Uh, I've got the discount code that they have given me, which is a BOMBER in all caps, and gives you 15% off anything you buy on the site. Right, I did promise you I would show you the difference between a wet and a dry use. So, I've got nothing on the back of my hand here at all. So here's a dry. Oh, it's going everywhere. So that's dry. Now, regular viewers will know that I'm always saying, do not put a wet brush into a pigment. Pressed pigment. Wet pigments, uh, dry pigments, or loose pigments even. It's hot. You can absolutely drench your brush. Dry the ferrule off the way. Because you can go into a loose pigment with a wet brush and you will get significantly less fallout and more intensity of colour so this is the wet use this is the dry one so you can see it's a lot more intense when you use a wet brush however do bear in mind that if you use a wet brush you will have a little bit more difficulty in terms of blending it with another colour next to it because you've turned it into effectively a paint. Um, it will still blend, You'll, it just won't blend as easily as these did. Uh, I'm just going to clean this brush off while I'm finishing talking to you. So, if I hold this back here you can see. And obviously you get no fallout when you use the pigment wet. So, uh, as I said at the beginning of this film, I have tried mixing some of the pigment in my little artiste palette and I've mixed it with, uh, I've got a couple of different mixing mediums. Um, the one that I use most frequently though is the Revolution mixing medium because it's more accessible to everybody. Uh, being available on Revolution site and on Beauty Bay. So, but using it with mixing it with a pig with a pigment mixer gives you the same result as using a wet brush. So you can do either, whichever you prefer. If you want to do mix a load of them up ready so you've got them as paints and you can just dip into them and do however you want if you're doing you know I don't know face painting or whatever and you want to use this instead if you're doing I mean Anya has done a um, a film where she's she's recreated a butterfly wing on her face so for that obviously it would make sense to do it with the wet colours so that it's as pigmented as possible and in that case I probably would have just mixed up all the different colours that I wanted so I could just dip into them as I want without having to worry about, you know, clean, you know. But there we go. This is now dry. 
So you can see that is the colour difference when you use dry brush, wet brush or pigment. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed watching this film. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you've picked up some tricks so that you feel more confident using loose pigments in future. Now I have got a lot of other films that you can watch on my channel. Uh, there are playlists uh, or you can just go to most recent and see what I've uploaded recently. Now I am still, I was told yesterday by someone I wonder why I wasn't seeing you in my newsfeed anymore. I've been unsubscribed from you. And I remember subscribing very vividly. So if you are one of my subscribers, even if you're still seeing me in your feed, please double check that you're still subscribed because um, I am still having the issue that YouTube are unsubscribing people. Uh, that being said, if you have found me by searching for Chrome Pebble to see whether there are any tutorials. Hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, I hope you'd like to stay. I understand completely if I waffle far too much for you, however, but um, it is a teaching channel and I really hope you would like to stay. Um, if you don't, that's fine, but uh, just don't forget to use the discount code and save yourself some money. Now, I don't earn from that discount code. So I'm not pushing the discount code at you like a Morphe shield thinking, ooh, ooh, I'll earn some money. You always get absolutely honest reviews from me, please or offend. And, uh, you know, if I, if I use a discount code or offer a discount code, it's because I have used the products and I trust the brand. Okay? All of my discount codes, including this one, are listed in the description box and they are all clearly marked whether I earn from them or not. It is entirely your choice whether you use them, but you know, you're saving money folks, who doesn't want to do that in this day and age? Right, that's it. I, I definitely give these a two thumbs up seal of approval uh, with my double peach stripe on the back of my hand. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.